if anyone is ever rude to you, sneeze muffin. <laughs> the TV show Friends is one of the best TV series, at least the most popular, ever made. Uh, what's also fantastic about it is there are a number of really great economics lessons. Creating a series where we are exploring the different economic lessons you see within Friends. If you like this sort of content, please click like and subscribe. It will help the channel. You could also click the notifications button and you'll get notified every time I drop a new video. So in this video, we're going to discuss what's called the principal agent problem. And that involves when you have somebody who is assigning tasks to somebody else the principal who's assigning the tasks often has different incentives than the agent, the person who's performing them. That often comes into play within jobs. Let's watch some clips from friends right now. Hi. Hi. How much do I have for the muffin and latte? Oh, well, that's on the house, courtesy of Joey Tribbiani. Oh, uh, great. We'll tell him thanks. And since uh, Joey seems like such a nice guy, maybe we could go on a date sometime. Well... He's not used to women being so forward, but uh, I could check with him. He says it's okay. <laughs> Great, thanks. Bye-bye. Okay, here are the tips for this morning. Mm. Jen gets 50, 50 for me, and Joey owes $8. <laughs> what? For all the free food you gave away. Well, if it's free food, how come you're charging me for it? <laughs> you don't give anything away unless it's someone's birthday. Mm. Well... What if they came in third in a modeling contest? No. Oh. Sorry. Well, you know what? This is great. Finally, I have someone I can pass on my wisdom to. Let me tell you about a couple things I learned while working at the coffee house. Um, first of all, the customer is always right. A smile goes a long way. And if anyone is ever rude to you, sneeze muffin. <laughs> Thanks, Rage. Chandler, you're an assistant, right? Did she call? You, you told her I was sick, right? Always tell her I am sick. No, I, I just don't know. How do you decide who to hire? I mean, I've got it narrowed down to two people. One of them has great references and a lot of experience. And then there's this guy. What about him? I love him. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Tell me what to do. Come on, you know what to do. You hire the first one. You don't hire an assistant because they're cute. You hire them because they're qualified. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, I hear what you're saying, and, and, and that makes a lot of sense. But can I just say one more thing? Mm -hmm. Look how pretty. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. But no. No, you can't, you can't hire him, because that, it's not professional. Um, this is for me, yes? <laughs> right. I'll hire Hilda tomorrow. Dumb old, perfect for the job, Hilda. And that's the Chrysler building right there. Oh. <laughs> Nina. Mr. Douglas. Cool tie. <laughs> She's still here. Yes, yes, she is. <laughs> Didn't I memo you on this? See, after I let her go, uh, I got a call from her psychiatrist, Dr. Flane, and, and Dr. Flane, and Dr. Flane. <clears throat> and uh, he informed me that uh, she took the news rather badly. In fact, he, uh, he mentioned the word frenzy. <clears throat> <laughs> You're kidding. She seems so... Oh, no, no, Nina, she is... <clears throat> okay, so we see some issues here within many of the characters in Friends and how they behave on the job. So let's start with Joey. Joey decides to go ahead and, when he has the job at Central Perk, give free coffee to women who come in that he finds attractive. That is absolutely, completely not what the boss would want Joey to do. But this is a really good illustration of the principal agent problem. So a principal agent problem, the problem is getting the incentives lined up so that the worker or the agent, the agent could be a non-working relationship, but usually it's working, so that the worker performs in the manner 
that the boss wants him or her to perform. The boss does not want Joey or any of their employees just giving away the products to people they find attractive, but Joey has an incentive to impress these ladies. He'd, he'd of course, like to date them. And so he has a, an incentive to go ahead and, you know, give them free coffee. That is one example. Uh, Rachel, actually there are several examples where Rachel's misbehaving in the series, uh, at least in terms of the principal agent problem, where she's doing things the boss wouldn't want her to do. At Central Perk, uh, there's a famous scene where she talks about sneeze muffins. She doesn't like a customer, so she'll sneeze on the muffins. That is, once again, something the boss would not want Rachel to do, but she has a personal incentive to get revenge on various customers, and she goes ahead and takes matters into her own hands. Uh, there is also the scene later on where she gets to hire somebody, and she chooses not necessarily the most qualified, but she makes a hiring choice based on the person she thinks is cute and would like to date. Once again, this is not the incentive the boss would like for Rachel to have. The, you know, Rachel's bosses, boss and bosses, would love for Rachel to kind of always be thinking of the best interest of the company in mind, not, uh, you know, well, her revenge when in terms of Central Perk or who she wants to date otherwise. Well, what about Chandler? Uh, Chandler, there's a couple interesting parts. When somebody doesn't know Chandler's name and goes ahead and is calling the name Chandler the wrong name, this person gets mad at the real Chandler for telling some information to superiors and decides to go trash uh, Chandler's office. And Chandler just goes ahead and helps with it. That's, again, not something the bosses would approve of. All of these various examples are examples where the incentives of the boss, of the supervisor, or as we call the principal, are not aligned with the incentives of the worker, who we call the agent. There's actually a branch within game theory that studies the principal-agent problem. There are ways that you can try to set up incentive structures to avoid these particular issues. So in order to avoid the principal agent problem, or at least minimize it, you could think about the compensation structures. You could think about whether there are bonuses for either an individual for doing well or for a team. You could think about profit sharing. So for example, if you trash an office and that office then needs to be replaced and it reduces the company's profits, maybe this is something that would have discouraged Chandler from doing that. You could think about what economists would call tournaments in the labor market where individuals who do well can get prizes. The prizes are usually promotions to the next level. And you need to think carefully about these because if an environment's already hyper-competitive, tournaments can lead to sabotage. But if they're not hyper-competitive, maybe that's what's needed in order to encourage employees to put in you know, a little bit of extra effort. So there's a number of things you can do in order to try to set up the incentives so that the incentives of the principal, the boss, match those of the agent, the employee. What we see in Friends is a whole lot of examples where those aren't aligned. Of course, it makes for fantastic television, but does not make for good examples of how to behave as an employee. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, once again, please click like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. <laughs>